Here we are with Exalted versus World of Darkness, City of the Bull God, Season 1, Episode 8. We are in October 2021, and today we have... Brendan as the Storyteller. Peter as uh, Sir Rigel Star, the Celestia Sensor as Solar Twilight. Devin as End of Sadness of the Infernal Exalted. Holden as Layla Church, the Infernal Exalted. And Sam as Rowan of the No Moon Exalted. All right, gang. So last episode, we had a little bit of a, uh, I would say, a mini little side adventure um, where that there was definitely not shenanigans and there was definitely not a lot of drinking and hanging out with uh, the mages. Um, but was there anything else that you guys would like to uh, recap before we figure out what that uh, Rowan and Layla were doing while that you all were definitely not doing time heists of uh, minimal consequence? Oh, time heist taught us a lesson about friendship and stuff, which we wanted to avoid, but it's inevitable. Um, so at the risk of fucking the recording up a minute and a half in, I... Well... Uh, if I'm wrong, then our, our uh, listeners get treated to the real stories of trying to do a, a recorded game. If not, what, if not, then I save us a lot of trouble. But uh, I've never seen this happen before. Uh, Devin, um, when the recording started, I saw everybody else's line advance like a quarter of the way across my screen before yours even appeared. Yep. Is that uh, right? I was seeing that, too. Yeah, so. But when mine went to the edge of the screen, it started to push itself off and line itself up with everyone else's voice the correct way. So I think it's fine. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that... Like, that it adjusted like itself. A known issue of... Well, I, know that I always have to adjust Devon's timeline to line up with everybody else. Yeah, you are... The lag is real. Yeah, worst case scenario... Okay, I've just That'll never clear seen itself that before, up in, so, in time. Yeah, just wanted to make sure it wasn't like a sign. Yeah, the like whole recording was going to be scuffed or anything. Okay, well, that just ate a, a minute of our runtime, but um, <laughs> back to the topic. Ah. So, anything else you want to bring up to the gang? Or will they have to discover Strobe only by themselves? Oh, we're definitely going to talk about strobe lo looting a couple of times, uh, at least in this next hour. St st what? I don't know. They've been talking about it in chat for the entire week, and they've been keeping it under wraps. So, sure. All right. So, wow. we're going to, uh, while that. while that Sir Rigel and uh, End of Sadness were out hanging out, uh, going bar hopping and talking metaphysics and time shenanigans. Uh, Rowan, um, what are you up to? It's probably time to deliver this uh, book to the owl spirit and that four loco that I've been dragging around this entire time. Ah, yes. The case of vintage four loco. I don't know what to do with it. Probably well, chug, chug. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what? Not probably not the best idea. We'll give you time powers, Rowan. Drink it. He's not nice the time also, powers you want. <laughs> so yeah, Rowan is planning to head through the spirit realm to meet up with his mentor. Okay. Um. What part of London do you like uh, switch over? Like, like, where are you when that you s make the swap over from the uh, from the material plane over to uh, the umbral plane? That's that's actually a really good question because instinct she's like, oh well, I'm just going to go to his flat because he's broken the uh, the barrier there so many times. It's kind of weak already. 
but he can't right. go back there anymore. Right. So. And now you're sad. And now he's sad. <laughs> so he's probably just going to, after realizing that himself, uh, going to just find probably a park, some place that has some sort of connection to the spirit realm, and let's see if it's not crowded. Go through it. Uh, about what time of day are you looking to do this? Uh, what time did we leave off? It, I think it was probably just morning. It was just about morning when you guys had left off. Yeah, so either waiting before or after, trying to catch before the rush hour or after the rush hour when everybody's at work. Um, after the rush hour is probably the better idea, I feel like, and especially considering that Rowan used to be kind of a nine to fiver uh, himself. That kind of makes the most sense. Yes. So you head to a nearby park. It doesn't have to be an important park, but just someplace that's a little bit out of the way, uh, has some cover for you and maybe some greenery. Yes. And uh, And since I do have... Oh, oh, go ahead. uh, Since I do have Eyes of the Cat, this should not be too difficult to track down. I can see where magical places are. So... Okay, it's always a good thing to, let's see. So, I'm just reading the Walk Between Worlds to see where that, uh, where it would be, where that it would, uh, how, how the difficulty would work on that. Right. Local concentrating. Okay, so the local gauntlet rating uh, in this park is probably going to be roughly an eight since it is still in the middle of like the city. There's not a whole lot of magical activity that's going on in the middle of the city. Um, If you had. uh, It's basically just a a little local park, essentially. Uh, There's no. uh, basically there there's no occult activity that has happened in this area so like there's nothing that really kind of like breaks the breaks through the gauntlet but you're also like in a park so it's not it's not like you're trying to do this in the middle of like a super high-tech skyscraper right right but i mean being a lunar specifically no moon it does automatically drop everything by one so right seven mm-hmm. um and honestly it's probably just going to take a little bit of time See if I can do it. If I'll do a little, let's see, was it rolling essence at difficulty seven? Not a big deal. Hopefully, I'll say botch. Nope. Let's see. Yeah, two eights. So excellent. Um, so with two eights, you are able to. Uh, with two successes, you are able to open up the uh, split. Open a rip between the the right the regular world and the umbra um how does this look like do you just kind of like reach into a tree and like step through or do you have like something in mind i think it's more of he starts wandering down a path and then he basically if we were looking outside from the outside world he turns down a path that doesn't exist and you you cat the camera would like pan through and you see that Yes, it is indeed a solid tree he just walked into. And it's... Okay. You walk into a uh, solid tree and uh, you can feel the... For the lack of a better term, uh, you can feel the flow of essence kind of going through your body that kind of tells you that, yes, you are within the umbra here. Um, You can see the... Uh, You can see the concrete and steel of buildings that have risen up around this park, uh, rising uh, almost infinitesimally, rising up into infinity, into the sky. And uh, the park around you seems maybe not smaller in like physical sense, but like it feels like that it is shirking away from it. And you can see multiple little kind of like animal uh, animals 
uh, or animal spirits kind of uh, hiding around uh, as they kind of like see you come out of a tree and like just your your passive perception, for a lack of a better term, just kind of like catches like things moving uh, hither and fro as they uh, kind of go hiding as that there is a intruder that they do not recognize here. That's that's understandable. Eh, skittish. The nature spirits are always upset being inside of a city. So unless they do anything that really catches my attention, I'll just leave them be. They're just very typically harmless. Is that, uh, anything that catches your attention? Um, if you want to roll it at a difficulty eight, I can give you, uh, there might be something that catches your attention, but for right now, nothing pops out. Sure. We might as well. Uh, that'd be perception and awareness or alertness. Uh, since they're spirits, I'm going to say awareness. Okay. That's another two successes. Okay. Um, one of the things that pops out to you as that you kind of peek out and around is uh, a lot of the smaller creatures, the mouses, the squirrels, uh, ferrets, that kind of thing, are kind of together in a smaller, uh, not a are to are to huddled all together almost like a red wall novel would uh <laughs> underneath like a large uh hollow in a tree and there's kind of a a small crackling fire going there as they all are keeping themselves warm um and there is a singular like what looks almost like a fox uh, standing guard. Oh, that's so adorable. Um, I don't want to disturb them, though, but I will glance over them, clearly not hiding that I know what's going on over there. Um, but I imagine what they do is they give me a look, I give them a look back, and just kind of like, do a curt little wave and then head on to my business. Uh, when you do that, uh, most of them do not notice you, but the fox spirit does, and it gives you this almost military nod of like respect. Uh, as you can tell, like obviously, it's kind of like the guard of the area, and it kind of like gives you the uh, you don't mess with me and I won't mess with you look. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty typical. Oh, honestly, that just made my day just a little bit better. Just, yeah. So, um, as you head out towards, I guess, where that you had last seen Al, um, as you head out towards the end of the forest, um, there is a rustling in the trees above you. Um, it's obvious that there is something large up above you. Um, if you could, you give me a quick dex and dodge roll. Mm -hmm. uh, difficulty, uh, six. Uh, dodge? Uh, do you mean athletics? Oh, I'm sorry. Athletics. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm so... So you said dodge being a stat. I'm the worst. <laughs> no, it's fine. There's a whole lot of attributes. Uh, this is actually something I'm fairly good at. <laughs> I say as I botch. <laughs> oh, boy. No, I didn't botch. I just failed. I, I do have a success. Oh, sorry. What difficulty was it at again? Uh, six. Okay, good. Yes, I have one success, but two failures. So. Oh, boy. Okay. Just failure. <laughs> Just failures. Okay. Give me just a second. Okay. So a rather large branch is going to uh, come down and conk you right on the head. Um, dealing, 
doing one bashing damage. Of course, you're welcome to roll your stamina to soak. And it's okay. <laughs> we're, we're fine. We can just keep moving on. Okay. Um, so seeing that uh, and getting a little conk on your a little bump on your noggin there, uh, I feel like, uh, do you look up? Yeah. Okay. Like, what just hit me? <laughs> Uh, there is a stick that has fallen, uh, and from up above, you can see great massive owl wings uh, that are coming down at you. What do you do? Uh, it's Al, so I assume he's trying to teach me a lesson of some sort. So, like, warily defensive. Not like full moon, sorry, full uh, form or anything, just kind of sitting there in concern okay um so coming down through the trees uh kind of gliding between the branches is this massive form of the owl spirit that is going to come down uh with talons outstretched and is going to Try to make an make like a basically the equivalent of a pounce attack on you. Uh oh, that, yeah. Let's try to dodge roll out of this. Okay. Is that what it can do? Sure. That would be what you would do. Uh, that or parry it, I guess, because technically exalted can parry bullets. So if you wanted to parry it, you could. No, let's let's try to roll. Let's just try to move out of the way. Okay, so that would be Dex and Athletics, uh, difficulty six, since you know the attack is coming. Uh, that is two successes this time. Okay, two successes. Okay. Um, two successes versus its two successes. I'm going to say Defender wins in this case. Um, yep. Yep. It comes down and you duck out of the way, but it's a near it's a near hit. Um, you know that if it had hit, it would have... Uh, the entire weight of Owl would have pushed you to the ground and you might have been in a bad state. But uh, kind of turning on your heels to make sure that you can face your enemy for a moment, um, Owl has landed uh, and kind of turn and does the Owl motion where that it turns its head a full 180 degrees while its back is to you. Oh. Like in that sudden twist almost like almost like an invisible Jason Voorhees just grabbed its head and just twisted oh jeez um this this is the owl I know right it is hello Rowan it's been a while it's been a day or two it's been quite more than that it's been at least Hmm. By my calculations, I would say roughly f five, maybe a week. You've oh, I, been busy. I suppose that's true, yes. Uh, yeah, what was that all about? Oh, yes. I wanted to make sure that you were aware of where you were. Just like Good dot, dot, house. dot. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, right, right. Uh, oh goodness, it's been quite a week. Uh, how, how have you been? Very busy lately. Maybe it's the way that the world around me has been shifting and changing. I just feel like it's been so long since we've talked. It has been eventful since the last time we talked. There's... Oh, boy. Yes. Yes. Actually. The last time that we talked, I had sent you out on a mission to get me something. Just something you thought that I would enjoy. Uh, yes, Have actually. You... <laughs> oh? Uh, yes, uh, he kind of pats down. Yes. Uh, so, uh, my my friend, uh, Sir Rachel Star, I suppose I can call him that now, he 
was in possession of an ancient book that I imagine you have read a thousand times. And I thought you might like it as a a gift of comfort. I, he pulls it out of his uh, breast pocket, like his coat. He looks to the book and then the lower half of his body does an about face to match where the, his head is. Yes. Um, and he begins to walk over to it and uh, sees the book and holds out his wings to like ask to be given the book as a gift. Right. Yes, he does. But he also goes, I was also told by another friend to give you this and take it with a grain of salt, but not literally, because I don't know if that would be tasteful. And he just kind shots, of shots. holds, <laughs> carefully holds the four loco to him. Like he's, it's like some sort of nuclear bomb. <laughs> you are free to not take this and I will not say anything. <laughs> The owl stares at the book for a moment and then brings it like towards him and then it just kind of disappears onto his person. And then he looks at the second gift that you have brought. You bring life and death mixed in one... (laughs) <laughs> container uh, you know that's an accurate way to describe it you it was a gift from uh, my other friend end of sadness to you through me not exactly sure in what order but well then end of sadness has brought an end to the sadness this will be distributed among my kin. Um, I Al will take the vintage for a loco. Do you stop him? Do you want to just take? Do you want to like smack it out of his hand and be like, "No, don't." No, it's a gift, but I'm like going to be like, "No, really, it's dangerous. Don't give it to anything with maybe less than a hundred pounds of weight." Do you hear it have weight? This is noted. We will present it before others of our stature. Stature. I don't know why I suddenly forgot how to words. <laughs> ah, don't worry, Rowan. Spirit don't have any weight. Concern intensifies, but it is out of my hands now, quite literally. It will take the vintage case of four loco. It will put it in the same. It will put it on the opposite side of uh, where that it put the book, and then it will pull the book out and begin to uh, casually flip through it. As this is the uh, the gift that a knowledge spirit would obviously be more interested in. Right. Rowan. We appreciate the efforts that you've gone to to bring not only one gift, but a second one to alleviate our boredom. What can we do in return? I... You said quite a while ago, actually, that there was... some lost uh, you uh, magics, not quite what you said, but magics. I sorcery? Yes. I I think I need to actually actively start uh, seeking such power, even though you have said it is dangerous. There's been many developments since then. And I mean, the tools I have. If you will accept the responsibility of the danger after these gifts, we believe that you will make a good student. Come to us 
at any time at which that you wish to be taught. And we will find you either the words of incantation that you require. And if we do not possess it, we will find another who does. That is quite a gift. Thank you. Uh, he does a curt uh, little bow. Your honesty and work has been appreciated. Is there anything else that you wish to know? Um, well, uh, more, more puzzling out something. Uh, if he would be perhaps a, a friend for a moment. A friend and not a teacher? Of course. He starts pacing clearly, worked up a bit. End of sadness uh, is quite persistent uh, that there are other voices, uh, mm. other spirits attached to us or something like that. Mm. I see, I see. He is adamant about many things, but well, see, the problem is, uh, you understand, is that I, I have memories that are not mine. I can't really remember them, but they're there. They're just little flashes, just little insights. And it, it bothers me because, you know, normally I would just, oh, it's end of sadness being end of sadness, but I just, I just killed two people. <laughs> and uh, it was instinctual. It was terrifying because I just did it. Uh, ah, yes, the hunt. Yes, I understand. Uh, while that you're doing this, could you make me? Because you're kind of like talking and kind of. I, I feel like that. Is it? I feel like that Rowan is kind of like pacing and talking. Like that's kind of how I see it in my head. Is that about correct? Yes, that is. Could you make me a perception and awareness roll at a difficulty seven? Okay. Uh, that is another two successes. Okay. Um, while that you're pacing, um, the forest seems alive to you, and the critters are kind of coming out and uh, kind of surrounding you and Al, making kind of a kind of a circle that's getting. Uh, more and more full on the outside as they're kind of watching as this elder spirit and something that they've, uh, if any of them have memory of what the you are, they're much older than they're letting on. Okay. Noted. Um, as you two are talking. Um, and Al is kind of steep. The best way that I can describe this is Al is steepling their feathers together. Right. I see, I see. Voices and past memories. That's quite the... Quite the tall order. But... Do you wish to know these truths, or do you wish to know of these truths? I... I honestly don't, I was mostly just, he can't be right, can he? That there are voices within your heads? It's always a possibility. I won't say that. We have seen many children of Gaia and many children of the wild speak Speak to things unseen and not there. And yet there are also those who speak to things that are only within their own mind. Oh, I don't like what you're saying because 
see, here's the problem. Because if you say this is true, then all of the other stuff that he's been saying that I've just been like, oh, yeah, that's just end of sadness is probably f- right. And I don't like that because he just showed me that hell's real. And that means that the world is dying and I am not holding it together. <laughs> Al puts a comforting talon or wing on your shoulder. Like yeah, in that way, a lot more comforting than the other, I think. Yeah. Okay. He puts a comforting wing on your shoulder and he looks you dead in the eyes as like his large beady owl eyes are like staring holes down into yours. Child, the world has been dying for longer than we have existed. This is a fact. But your time here has given the spirits of this dying, dead world something they have been missing for centuries. For Loco? (laughs) <laughs> Excellent. No, that's only no hold. That's only decades. <laughs> ah. The world might be dying, but it will go down in a hammer. <laughs> They've been missing hope, Rowan. Okay. Okay. You can okay. bring them hope. Okay, yeah, just because he's right about some things in the past doesn't mean he's right about the future. That means we can change things. Okay. When things die, they make way for new things. Even if he is right about the world being dead, it is just part of the great cycle of rebirth. Now, enjoy yourself. Because you are alive. And he's going to slip a larger than average wine glass into your hand. That is definitely not something that has energy drinks and kind of tastes like cough syrup in it. I mean, I can't reject a gift, but I wish I could. (laughs) (laughs) Don't we all? I'm calling on one. I'm calling on some core memories of how classic Four Loco tastes. If you ever wanted to find out what it would taste like if you wrung out your sweat socks in Chernobyl. Oh. You're not wrong. It's terrible. It's the worst. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, no, that's Al going. It's the worst. And yet it gives you energy. <laughs> Um, and then Al will proceed to uh, teach you any, sp- if you have XP to spend, uh, we'll teach you some spells. Uh, if not, uh, you can just come back to this park and learn from him. Uh, we can do that as like a downtime thing whenever you want to spend XP. But Al will now teach you teach you ancient sor- sorcery. Okay, so I'm going to be learning Mists of Eventide while hopped up on four Loco. I'm going to be learning the sleep spell while (laughs) over-caffeinated. You know what? That sounds great. Also, if it's okay with you, you should definitely give, like, the miss, like, some kind of, like, really bad artificial, like, flavoring smell to them, like cherry or something like that. (laughs) Oh, no. It's probably going to last for the first few. (laughs) Yep. All right. (laughs) All right, then. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to do before I uh, swap over? No, no that's good. That's a good okay. Point. Uh, you and Al enjoy uh, some classic Four Loco. Um, at some point during the time uh, while that you're being taught uh, some spells, um, the uh, the fireflies of the area, uh, the, the spiritual fireflies of the area kind of a light over London for about an hour or so and then kind of disappear. It's a very beautiful sight that you see. 
Excellent. All right, then. So you'll probably wake up with... Uh, You'll probably wake up with either way too much energy or the worst hangover of your life, and it is literally a 50-50 split. Why not both? Yeah, that's horrifying. <laughs> you go for a run with a migraine. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you enjoy this time. And then we switch, and then the camera is going to switch from the sp from the spirit lens over to the regular world, where that uh, Layla is. Uh, Layla, what are you up to? What indeed? Well, I know that you have that uh, that meeting at, to deal with uh, River Cook at Carfax Abbey at some point. Yeah, um, well, since the rest of the gang appears to have up and vanished into the aether. Uh, Literally, it away. turns out in Rowan's case. Um, exactly. <laughs> that does seem like a time to follow up on some of these leads that have been appearing. Such as the, the suspiciously vampire-themed nightclub. Well, you know what they say sometimes, hide, hiding in plain sight is the best way to do it. Yeah, Layla is feeling like like the world's biggest asshole for not noticing this. Like, Well, I mean, was goth industrial really Layla's scene? No, but still. Then, I mean, she could definitely be forgiven for uh, not thinking that, uh, this would have a connection. She probably uh, stuck to more like heavy metal and hard rock like that her band used to play. And also the like she's sort of been giving vampires more credit than just like to be just hanging out in Dracula references in plain sight. So but I guess when you convince everybody you don't exist, you can afford to just be an asshole. So here we are. I mean, something, something, uh, Satan convinced people that he doesn't exist. Anyway. Oh, they're uh, about to find out all about that. <laughs> oh, I bet that they are. So I assume that you're going there at night. That's about the only time that would really make sense. The vampires wouldn't be there for you to mess with uh, during the day. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. So Carfax Abbey is a club that is uh off the beaten path um the entrance to it is down a grungy and dirty looking alley it is not the best place to be uh you're not in the nicest part of london now um but the actual club space uh once you manage to get through the front door uh which i imagine that layla doesn't have any trouble with uh is actually fairly nice it's a nice change of pace. It's cleaned up well. Um, it has multiple floors to it. Uh, by your estimate, at least three, assuming that there aren't, there isn't a hidden fourth floor somewhere. Uh, the strobe lights and the raving and uh, whatnot is going on with a bar that is very well stocked. Uh, much more well stocked than a bar bar that is on the essentially the wrong side of the tracks and the entrance is only down a shitty alleyway that looks dirtier than uh dirtier than a san francisco street this place is much nicer than you imagined upon coming in uh the goth industrial music is playing as a uh, band is up on stage with uh, keyboard, bass guitar, and some very choice vocals about uh, death and uh, murder and the other kinds of things you'd hear from a band like, I don't know, like KMFDM or Skinny Puppy. That just kind of reaching into my random... Uh, <laughs> musical uh, ideas of what industrial sounds like. <laughs> Anybody she recognizes? 
Hmm. Give me, let's see, it's a pretty busy club. Um, if you could give me a quick uh, perception and alertness roll, that would probably be it. Uh, difficulty is going to be a seven. Sure. And that is seven, one, nine, one success. One whole success. Um, immediately, no one stands out to you. Um, it's, this isn't exactly Layla's scene. Uh, the band up, uh, up on stage isn't exactly your, uh, you don't know anyone up on there. The bartender doesn't look familiar from anywhere else that you've been. But as you kind of peer around, um, there are a few people who had frequented some of your shows that are now here. Uh, just random, uh, random fans uh, from years past that kind of people who kind of like your brain kind of makes the connection of I've seen this person, but I don't know their name. Hmm. Did I correctly hear you say there's like a big mirror behind the bar? Uh, I don't remember mentioning that, but that is definitely what that I would say is in a big goth club. So yes, let's go with there's a big mirror behind the bar. Well, let's start our, the scoping out uh, the evening exercises by ordering a drink and watching the and uh, spending a few minutes watching the room and then watching the mirror and trying to see if anybody doesn't line up between the two. Like, Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, if only vampires worked that way. <laughs> well, I mean, some of them kind of do. Yeah. But, you know, if uh, if those ones were in town, you'd be in trouble. A lot of people would be in trouble. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, then, um, why don't you give me a perception and alertness roll at difficulty six? And I will let you know if anyone doesn't line up with their mirror. Uh, that would be a six or one and a nine. OK, so same thing. <laughs> Oh boy. Um, One success. You think that you catch a few people who don't line up, but it's honestly, it's just kind of your imagination. Um, but upon doing this kind of giving that look into the mirror and then a sudden turn back and then a turn back to the mirror, the bartender comes up to you and just goes, Hey lady. Uh, what can we get for you? Uh, same again. I, oh, I, ordered, yeah. I ordered when I sat down. Right. He gets you the same. So, uh, you okay? Yeah, why wouldn't I be? Well, you're uh, looking a little frazzled there. Oh, I'm just waiting to meet someone. Oh, yeah? Uh, anyone? I, uh, do you know their name? I could uh, maybe see if they're in the area. I was a fellow and uh, usually wears a white jacket by the name of Andrew. He thinks about it for a moment. White jacket. Hmm. Don't see a lot of those around here. This is... Uh, if you'd said red, I might have been able to help you, but uh, white seems a little... A little out of fashion for the area, but uh, the man sort of just brings his own fashion with him. Andrew Parker, you... Mm. Blonde, looks like he never sees the sun. Well, I don't suppose looking like he never see the sun would uh, stand out much in this club. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're not wrong there. Hmm. Actually, that does sound like someone who, who I've heard of before. Maybe not that person exactly, but uh, tell you what. Let me uh, let me let me ask someone real quick. And uh, do you mind waiting just a moment? He ordered him a drink. <laughs> Nothing better to do. Huh? Fair enough. So uh, this person kind of goes off for a moment. And then they come back um, by the time that your drink's done. Do you want another? Never said no yet. They pour the drink for you. Uh, knew that uh, the last name kind of Parker sounds a little bit familiar. Um, I think that we might do work with their associate, uh, uh, Mr. Cook or River Cook. Was River Cook, uh, it's been weeks. Was River Cook the, uh, River Cook is the name that the other guy gave you. If I remember correctly. Was that his name or the, um, That is the. Um, Sorry, I've wow. I've crawled ba- back and forth through the ass of uh, and guts of the core book for the game we're playing right now about seventeen times in the last no, two no, weeks. You're fine. It's just I destroyed am... my brain. <laughs> so you went to Club Aquarium and you might control some guy and he told you about River Cook, a guy who frequents the golf club Carfax Abbey. Yep. Right, 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 right. Okay, yeah, that's coming clear now. They're kind of the, uh, the, the they're the go between between uh, uh, a lot of the club people and Andrew Parker, because you know sometimes you have to, uh, you know, book a book a show but do all the paperwork uh, during the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, We've got a uh, Mr. Cook uh, over in the over in one of the booths. Um, if you wanted to speak with them, I think that the names are similar. That would be lovely. That would be absolutely lovely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, he just kind of gets some drinks together and uh, motions for you to follow him, as that he has like. Uh, a, a large, like, pint glass of beer uh, that that you assume is for Mister Cook. Mm-hmm. Um, you follow him. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. He goes up some stairs uh, towards the the third floor that kind of has like a like a balcony that like looks over the dance floor. It's a nice little booth area, uh, kind of like opera seating to like look over it. Um, and. Sitting there is a fairly well dressed uh to you young man um who is done up in very uh goth makeup. Uh there's a lot of black there's a lot of heavy black eyeliner. Uh their pants definitely have some like little uh th- th- they have like the straps with the chains on them and uh they, they're wearing like a mesh shirt that shows off their very, very slight frame. This man looks like that he could be bowled over by a gust of wind. And they look to you. And they give a nod to the bartender who leaves after setting down the beer. <laughs> Hello, darling. How can I help you? You said this person's name was uh, Cook? River. Yeah, River Cook. River Cook. River, is it? I believe we have a friend in common. Oh, is that so? Are you you talking about my friends on stage? The, uh... Oh, 
shit. What did they call their band name? Anathema Supreme. Anathema Supreme. Yes. Uh, oh, are you talking about my friends down there on the on the stage? Uh, deviation tonic. No, although I do quite no, although I do quite like the uh, the noise. Um, oh yes, they're, they're, yeah, they're fairly competent for a, for a uh, cover band. Well, it's uh, it's all in the performance, isn't it? Oh yes, yes, it is. There's you can have some bad cover bands. These ones actually fairly good. Very impressive. The singer is able to just mimic Ogre's voice. Very good. No, but as much as I'm enjoying them, uh, I was another fellow I was thinking of that uh, I believe we have a co- in common as an acquaintance between us. Do you mind if I sit down? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Please have a seat. It's it's always a joy to be joined by such a lovely young vision of beauty. Uh, flatter will get you everywhere. Slides into the... Uh, is he in a booth or just corner table? Or... Uh, he's in a booth. Booth, Okay. Sides in the booth across from him. Yep. So, friend in common, then? Yeah, we did some business together last year. Uh, worked out pretty well until it didn't, unfortunately. But that's the way these things go, you know? Yes, yes, that is how it goes. Yeah, I was a pale fella by the name of Andrew. Okay. This person is going to try and hide their emotions as you mentioned this. Give me a perception, but it's going to be difficulty for because this person is fairly bad at this. Perception plus Uh, alertness. Empathy, alertness. Oh, you know what? Actually, Empathy, empathy would work. Oh, good, because that's one of my key abilities. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, uh, actually, get a dice pool this time. You said what? What was the difficulty? Uh, four. Okay, and ones don't subtract, so this should be yeah, five successes. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I'll put double tens on because insight. Uh, make that six. You know, for someone else, someone less trained, someone who's less good at reading emotions. It might have been a half-assed effort, and he might have been able to do it if they had beer goggles on. Literal and figurative. But here, with you being able to basically peer into his soul, you know that the moment that you mention Andrew, and he just finishes the name, because his brain can't Help but finish it when that you mention uh, when you mention that man's name. There is a sudden look of love, devotion, fear, and then a little bit of being upset that crosses the face all at once. And with I mean, with that many successes, you're able to kind of discern this. There is no hiding that he knows Andrew Parker from you. And your discerning eye. Oh, Andrew. Yes. How do you know Andrew? As if he purposely repeats the question that you just gave him. Trying to deflect. Oh, well, as I said, we did some business over uh, a bit of music. In the year that's just gone by. Right, and uh, who would you be? Well, lovely vision of beauty, I think you said. Uh, I've been trying to get back in touch with the man for a while, but he is a slippery one, you know. Yes, yes, he does uh, slip around from time to time. He's been less interested in certain scenes. Did you know that country is making a comeback here in uh, here in London? It's very weird, but it's it's happening according to Mr. According to Andrew. Fucking country now. Are you serious? 
Yes, yes, they're all uh they're all getting up in up into it. They say that it's very uh old school. <laughs> yeah, I can't I can't picture the man uh listen to Garth Brooks. It's just difficult to credit. Oh well no no not not Garth Brooks like old old school, like country like uh like from the sixties over in America. Ah, uh, well, he always did have eclectic tastes. He stares for a moment and then uh, is kind of doing like that thing where you're fidgeting and kind of flips over his phone and is kind of like fidgeting on it. Uh, in the way that someone who is not bad at hiding that they're texting, but like you're not you're not a schoolhouse teacher trying to watch thirty students not try to text each other. Yes, you've indeed. got eyes on him. Yes, indeed, we were. Uh, yeah, we were thick as thieves for a little while. Took me to the electric ballroom once. He did. Oh, that's amazing! I've. That's amazing that I've never heard of you then. Oh, it's not that amazing. I'm, I probably doesn't even remember Portal, Layla Church. Busy man that he is. Did he ever get that, uh, did he ever buy for himself that lead belly replica he had his eye on? He stares at you once that you Give him your name. Hmm. No, I don't think that he did. You know, Mr. Parker is. He's been away for a while. I think that he's been doing a tour in France or Germany. Oh, that is a shame because I was really looking forward to making it eat, eat it piece by piece, strings first, then the bridge, all the way down his fucking gullet into his heart. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Well, Miss Church, before things get... Before you say pain. another word, why don't, you, why don't you shut your mouth and answer my questions? And that's about time for Crown of Fury to come out, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just mark off two essence. Oh my god, are you are you are you flaring now? Uh not yet. I'm still okay. one off. Okay. How's your limit, buddy? How is your limit, buddy? That is a good question. Well, technically, I'm not uh, witnessing the mighty abusing the weak. I'm the one doing it here. So, I mean, can you <laughs> witness yourself? I don't know. <laughs> well, we moved away from the mirrors, so I think I'm good. Uh, <laughs> so that is charisma, leadership, difficulty of this dude's willpower. This dude's willpower is going to be a six. Okay. Uh, six dice. Six. Um, forceful. Yeah, that seems about right. So I think I've got a special <laughs> going. Well, that's, uh... Do we have a new permanent NPC here? No, I've just had some fucking ones show up to fuck my day up. Is that your key thing? Don't you ignore those? I'm, I'm staring at, uh, a fat fucking zero successes. Okay, Oof. Uh, and with a failure, the subject cannot be targeted by this charm again in the current scene. Um, Fuck me. Well, this just went Extraordinary south, like, rendition. Extraordinary rendition. Wildly. Um, 
uh, when Vampire fails to dominate. <laughs> right? He stares at you and there's a moment of just kind of like him recognizing that there's something going on, but he can't perceive it. All right, then you're going to hurt Andrew Parker. Am I under that correct assumption? Layla blinks twice as she feels that push of uh, that, that power that she dragged up with her out of the Thames for the first time. Uh, since she was back up uh, on the uh, back up walking around the surface of London, hit a barrier and just slide off around it without catching hold. And she wasn't actually sure that could happen until just now. And this is a hell of a time to find out. Oh boy, isn't it though? Excuse me, Miss Church. You said that you were going to hurt Mr. Parker. I don't believe I did. Could have sworn that you said something about feeding him something right down to his heart. Ah, uh, use your mind wiping charm if you have one. Yeah, the problem is, as soon as I pull that out, I am flaring. <laughs> Miss. And I can and I can feel that just about to uh, bust loose with just a little bit of a nudge. Ah, fuck! Your, co- your car you went there and goes yes, yes. <laughs> I don't have one of those. <laughs> uh, don't all infernals have one? Just very weak one, something, something. You, we all have them. Some of us just don't so admit they're real. Miss Parker. Sorry, wrong. you're not Miss Parker. Wow. That is- <laughs> Mr. Anderson. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. You're He's having a stroke. Anderson. Call the Bondulance. <laughs> Sony's back up. Miss Church. Taking such threats against Mr. Parker seriously is my job. I would ask you to please not do something so... I'm going to snatch the phone out of his hand. Just no warning, (laughs) mid-sentence. Okay. Um, He's not even going to contest you. You can see that he has been rapidly uh, in a text conversation uh, with... One that says that just says AP. You can take a guess what that means. Oh, it's very, this is very handy. Thank you. You've been ever so helpful. I'm just standing up, heading heading out. Did you want to see what the text conversation says? Oh, I'm scrolling through as I as I head for the door, and I'm hoping, de- desperately hoping, he's following me. He is sitting there and kind of smirking. As you are going for the door, you scroll through the text conversation and you can see that uh, close to around the time that you showed up, um, this guy immediately was texting and was like, Miss Church is here. What should we do? There's a pause of a couple of minutes from Andrew Parker later on. Yes, sir, of course. She's asking questions. Later on. Yes, sir. Of course, things are getting things are getting serious. I'll be there momentarily. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh, it's my birthday Layla. and Christmas all come at once. Layla, uh. when that you go get down to the first floor, please give me a. Uh, Perception and alertness roll. I know that you don't have great alertness, but... I have zero. (laughs) (laughs) Difficulty five this time. Oh, joy. Okay, well, we've managed to fuck up the good dice pool. Let's see if the shitty one comes through for us again. (sighs) 
It does not. A 10, a 1, and a 2. So how many successes is that? Just that a zero? Is zero, because Oof. the 1s are out in force tonight. You go down. You storm off. And as you're getting to the door, you can hear a very, very familiar voice. Okay, let's see how much of an asshole I can make this guy sound like. (laughs) Oh, dear Layla. It's been so long. And as they bring attention to themselves, you can see standing in the middle of a very, very crowded dance floor is a man who doesn't look like they've ever seen the sun in a white suit that stands out so heavily in this goth industrial club. She shoves the phone into a pocket and just gives the biggest smile she has. It's been ever so long, too long and yet not long enough. You are a hard, hard man to find. Only when I want to be, Layla. So, I see that you've come knocking, looking for me again. As that my associates have said, have you reconsidered my dear? I've spent a very great deal of time thinking about it for certain. Mm-hmm. Of course, obviously, the terms are going to have to change. You did... <sighs> insult me earlier. How do you feel about country, Layla? (laughs) (laughs) Limit (laughs) play. Oh, Oh, that's good. That is good. Yes. Well, then. We should probably... I'll tell you honestly. i tell you honestly. There was a time I tore the city apart looking for... Uh, looking for your... Uh, dropped your name everywhere. Rung up all my acquaintances. Made a terrible pest to myself to the owners of every club in London and no one would admit to knowing you and I did it all just meaning to come back and throw myself on your mercy and I I tell you I'd take your your stupid fucking deal I'd walk off from my mates and give you whatever you liked if you just take your foot off our necks now there were nights months of them but that's as in the rear view as everything else between us. Oh, yes. Well, I had to make sure that you got taught a lesson. Oh, I learned so many things while we've been away. Mm-hmm. I certainly hope that that pertains to the way that you work that guitar of yours. Hmm. Music off. Mm. Would you like to see? Would you like to see something that I have learned? Here, Layla, with all these people around us. That's a very simple matter. Here, just, just hold your hand out, palm up. Just take my hand. I don't know what kind of. weird things that you've gotten yourself into while that you've been off of my radar. But I don't think I will. Andy, I never knew you to be shy before. Shy? 
look at how many people that I have around me just waiting for me to give them a chance. Oh, yeah, you can be terribly benevolent when you feel like it. It's such a shame that you're such an absolute fucking prick on the back end of it. How else do you do you expect me to act when I'm slighted, Layla? Oh, I don't know. You could take it like a f- you could handle your disappointment like anyone else in the city does. Take it like a fucking man. Hmm. I don't think that you've been in this city for very long, then, Layla. Oh, likely not as long as you. Come on, you weren't you weren't afraid to touch me last time we were together. Hmm. He thinks over it for a moment. You're right, I wasn't. But you've also managed to make a name for yourself in some circles. Have I now? The snakes talk. Oh, they don't talk enough if you're willing to come here and look at me face to face. Hmm. No, but you see, I have... I did the smart thing. I'm going to play your own... (sighs) foolish way of thinking against you. What are you going to do? Attack me while there are so many people here? They, they'd be witnesses. The police would be after you in no time. Layla Church. After me for what, sir? That you're... You're obviously here for revenge, aren't you? You're such a two-dimensional thinker, Andy. It's Andrew. (laughs) And what will happen if I take your hand? Oh, you... I haven't... I've never seen you timid before. It's actually boring. You are an indecisive little girl playing at trying to be bigger than the rest of them. See, that's the funny thing is I never wanted that and I never gave a damn. That's your obsession, mate, not mine. Uh, Holden, what is your, uh, willpower? Uh, seven. Seven. Okay. Uh, he is going to try to lock eyes with you and get you to run away as he's going to try and use dread gaze on you. Hmm. In the middle of a club. Bold move. Mm hmm. Give me two seconds. Okay. Okay, so, um, considering that they are in the middle of a goth club, this is, well, this is a vampire club. He is going to, for a moment, reveal his vampiric nature. 
and people are going to be spooked by it. Uh, but he did only get one success. So um, against your willpower, that does make you a little bit startled by it, but you do not have to run away. I've also got an intimacy. Uh, I hate this fucking guy. And amusingly, because this is like 500 pages of fucking rules, I'm now looking up exactly what that does for me. <laughs> You're fine. Well, but like, if you have, there are some charms that uh, tie in with that, like, oh, if someone makes you betray your intimacy, you say no. And also with the limit stuff, if you're like forced to betray or undermine your intimacy, you get the limit. So like, you know. That would be a consequence of this meeting. Act against abandon or betray an intimacy can make a willpower roll against difficulty eight to refuse. Hmm. I guess if you'd be pleading you to spare him, you could be like, nah. Bro. Yeah, it's, it's, this is like borderline. So you're saying just like uh, one success is just like a bad case of the nerves. Yeah, it's like a bad case of the nerves. I would say maybe you have like, I don't know, if we need to make some role, if you need to make some kind of like social roles or anything, like you might have like a minus one die penalty to it. Mm -hmm. So this guy just did the full on fucking like fang hiss at me in the middle of a club. Yeah, he, he, he just like looked at you and he like pulled some like what we do in the shadows like <laughs> at you oh <laughs> uh, yeah moreover each success subtracts one from the uh targets action dice pools next turn oh there you go oh, there you go um so yeah uh he's gonna do that and uh He's going to kind of assume that it worked and will start approaching you. He is, however, you do notice that the people that are around him are kind of moving in lockstep with him. Uh, basically, uh, to put it in the simplest terms, uh, if you were to attack him and cause any kind of collateral damage, there's a pretty big chance you're going to start hurting mortals, too. Mm, mm, yeah, that's a problem. So when those fangs come out, it actually, it, it, I mean, it, it fucking works. She's, it, that second Layla's right back there in the fucking diner, uh, two seconds from death and just remembers dragging herself back to the apartment, going through an entire fucking carton of OJ, just trying to get the strength to stand up, stand up straight mm -hmm. after the sun came up. And at about the moment he gets within arm's reach, she drops her arm, look, uh, looks him up uh, straight in the eye. It's like, which actually takes a couple of tries because he's hard to fucking look at. Takes a deep breath. And we're going to try this again. Andy, this isn't the diner. And you should have run while you had the chance. So we're now flaring our anima in the middle of a goth nightclub. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Uh, I'm down a die, I do believe. Mm -hmm. Are you doing Crown with Fury again? I sure am. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, difficulty on this is going to be a seven. Uh, that is his willpower. I'm going to go ahead and spend the willpower as well. Not a bad call. So let's give this the old college try. I did not need to do that at all. Nine, eight, nine, ten, five. How many is that? Uh, with the willpower, that is five fucking successes. 
Holy shit. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for the first time around. Oh, man. Do we okay. Need to take a break to figure out what will just happen, or no? Um, we we can break in just a little bit, but as the as a you begin flaring, um, the people around you, uh, that were uh kind of subsumed into Andrew Parker's uh like kind of presence field, to put it lightly, um, begin to scurry the instruments on stage are dropped and up above on the third balcony uh river cook uh stands up and walks out they head uh away from the night but that's not important what is important is that andrew parker this fucking scumbag who has ruined Layla's life is now, well, completely under your control for the next year as your hellish glory in many ways seeps into the fabric of reality. What is the first command that you give Andrew Parker? That's a great question. <laughs> Should we break and come back to that and let us all think on this? Yes. Sounds good. Okay. And post. And we're back. All right, then. So starting off up top. Uh, so now that I've gotten a stare out a window for five minutes to figure out what <laughs> I was going to do. Um, we're sorry. You're fine. This is completely, this has not thrown a wrench. It is just added more gears. So what is the first order that you're going to give to Andrew Parker? Well, this time she feels that good old power of hell bite all the way through. So that's nice. It still works. He, when this goes through, and the infernal power subsumes him. Um, when he's not trying to resist it, there is this absolute subservience look in his eyes as he stares at you. That's good because we're like right now face to face inside of this burning viridian aura that's uh, nearly reaching to the ceiling of this club. As I'm assuming people are freaking out all around us. Yes, many of them are freaking out. Uh, there's a few who are less interested in what's going on, but <laughs> that anima flare of yours has made a lot of the regular patrons of uh, Carfax Abbey very concerned. So I'm going to throw a friendly shoulder around, a uh, friendly arm around Andrew's shoulder. Well, Andy, you decided you wanted to do this in public. So the first thing I'd really like you to do for me is to call on all your considerable resources and pull your strings and cash in your favors and bury this. Make this go away. Keep it out of the newspapers and off the blogs, you know, the way that you do. Oh, well, that's a lot less revenge that than the uh, than the GM was thinking was going to happen. And, oh, we're just getting started. Oh, I figured, but that's definitely not uh, what that I thought was going to happen. And Andrew Parker just looks at you and just with the most puppy dog eyes that an undead creature could manage. Oh, yes, of course, Miss Church, I'll get right on it. And he pulls out the latest iPhone and begins dialing people and calling people at a rapid pace uh, to the point that it is almost honestly impressive if he wasn't such a shit heel. Yeah, if I wasn't watching like a ver a, an advanced version of what he did to us. No, I'm keeping that in mind. 
uh, as that he's going through this, uh, he is uh, between calls speaking to you. Now, of course, Layla, there's obviously going to be some people who are not going to be able to be cowed by our considerable resources. But, madam, I believe that we should be able to make sure that this, he thinks for the word, stares into your anima, masquerade breach can go uh, unnoticed, hopefully. Uh, well, don't hurt anyone, certainly, but um, do what you, do what you need to do. Do what you would oh. do if you if you'd made this mess. Since, in a sense, you did. No hurting anyone. All right. Yes, I'll have to make a few extra calls then, but we can figure this out. I'm sure that we can at least send some people off on vacation for a few months while that they uh, win a. All expense paid vacation. I'm sure that I have the funds somewhere. Uh, you oh, know yes. I can just ask. I can just ask my sire. This is a right little cock up that I've gotten us into. It certainly is. But in the end, fortune smiles on everyone. Also, you might want to get that little pissant who ran out of here earlier back. You know, make sure he doesn't get get you into any trouble. Oh, uh, Robin! Oh, yeah. Robin, uh, cook. No? Yeah? River. 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 Cook. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It starts with an R. That's not mine. Isn't he now? No, no. He is, uh, he's on loan from, uh, he's on loan from my sire. Oh, that's probably for the best since I have his phone anyway. Um, <laughs> shoves that back in her pocket yes yes i'm sure that Bryn is going to have such a laugh about this uh tomorrow night i'm sure he will also um my lads you know that you you you, you had your jollies with they're all in terribly uh difficult financial straits at the moment so i'll need you to straighten that out as well mm, uh, yes yes of course of course i can send uh a little bit of money here and there. Uh, generosity. Get... Generosity is the spirit of the thing. Yes. Well, I mean, charity is what that we're all here for to alleviate the human condition. And he kind of like flashes fangs, but like in a funny way. Uh, indeed we are. Yeah. You know, six months rent paid up, that sort of thing. Um, uh, you're a resourceful lad. I'm sure you can sort it. Oh, yes, 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 I can. Yes, indeed. Oh, uh, silly me. And there'll be other things I'll be thinking of. So, and she pulls out her own phone. Uh, could you, you know, uh, I, I assume you've got the latest. Oh, yes, yes, of course. And they, you do the little tap phone thing, mm-hmm. exchange whatever's. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, um, yeah, that, yeah, this is a good place to, oh, geez, people are still freaking start, out. Start making amends? Yes, yes, I feel the same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, if you, and, and if you take it, uh, to your mind to feel another way, uh, do recall that this was me being nice. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, so, uh. Shall I be introducing you at the Highgate Cemetery for Elysium? You know, that's a fantastic idea. Yes, well, I just figured that you should just get to know all the movers and shakers now that you're... Well, I mean, you're so... And he kind of, like, is searching for the words... Uh, you feel like that powerful might have come 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 to mind. I mean, you are kind of subsuming his entire will. Um, and the weird thing is, is that, yeah, technically he can try and resist. But Andrew Parker is nothing if not a survivor. So he's not going being. to. Oh, yes, yes. I'm waiting for you to give him a command that goes against his uh, his nature. 
Ah, yes. Since we're going to be uh, neighbors in the, in the London Underground for the foreseeable future, that sounds a, absolutely just a right neighborly sort of thing to do. And is there anything useful, uh, you know, that you, that you could tell us about, you know, we are disrupting the club. Perhaps there's somewhere private we could go and uh, have this conversation. These poor people, they just want to get their dance and their drink and their music on. Well, the ones that haven't run screaming out of here already, I mean. Oh, yes. Uh, we could absolutely go to a club. Uh, mm, I'm not... You pick the bar and I'll pay. We can leave here after you've finished any kind of motions to all of you. As in to say, please stop going before we go outside. <laughs> Yeah, if we've got a back room, it it it, do, it does take a moment to wear off. Mm-hmm. Uh, so are so you're all gonna uh, so you guys go to a back room. Uh, you wait for it to wear off. Uh, if you want drinks here, you're welcome to them. Or if you want to go somewhere else, you're also welcome. To that. Yeah, vanishing is probably a good idea at this point because I imagine if this is a vampire club, there are probably several vampires getting panic speed dials right now. Minutes per. Uh, how long does it take for the anima to go down? Uh, uh, minutes, six time minutes. Message. Three minutes, persons. Yeah, so like six minutes. Okay, so we're if probably the, most of the way through the burn through already. If the anima goes down that quick, uh, you are out of there before any of the hounds or uh, sheriff people or anyone from higher up Camarilla status comes in to figure out what was going on. There are still some stragglers who are like outside, like freaking out a little bit. (laughs) You go out, there's a couple bars down the street and you guys go in to talk. But while you're walking around, uh, if you could give me a mm, perception roll difficulty five. Well, not supernatural stuff, so awareness, right? Uh, sorry, perception. Uh, well, I know that <laughs> I know I that Layla had. So. I know that Layla has no alertness or awareness, so uh, that's why I said well, one of those. Okay. Uh, two five two one success. Okay, well, with one God success, difficulty five. Yeah, <laughs> with one success, you look up and you can see uh there are a bunch of uh like drones with strobe lights on them and one larger one above that is just kind of going across the sky as uh some weird teenage fad is going on you guess i don't know hmm. i don't know did you have tiktok or tumblr on your phone you because have to like be a that TikTok would kid. like <laughs> you you might have gotten some uh so, some notifications about some weird stuff oh yeah Okay, so you've got TikTok on there. Uh, there's some sort of... If you click on it, uh, th- there's someone who is basically telling people to release drones with strobe lights on them tonight. And our drones with it's strobe lights... It's part of the hell well maxing trend to balloons. see if you can commit as many sins as possible to get into hell. It's called strobe balloons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that seems like one of the probably maybe the third stupidest thing happening in the city today. All right. The only thing about that uh, that whole thing that seems odd is is that most of them were going in a singular direction, which was up, and there was one larger one that was going from left to right. But eh, you know, maybe the winds up higher, you know, got 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 a little weird. Yeah, it's moving fast against the wind. <laughs> yeah, we're preoccupied at the moment. <laughs> we have important shit to worry about. <laughs> Got important shit to worry about. Not not drug deliveries. Uh, anyway, um, so you go to the nearest bar, sit down uh, at the bar with uh, Andrew Parker. and So at this point, um, we've got basically two options, as I see it. Yeah. Uh, one is that we can spend the rest of the session on my scene, which we probably don't want to do. And the second is that I can just say that my intent here is to basically to pump him for information about the city's vampires 
and uh, okay, and what, and what we're likely to run in, and who and what we're likely to run into at Elysium. Um. So, would you rather that be role played out, or would you rather that be kind of like a uh, we can kind of like smash cut from like uh, you guys being introduced and like I give you like the lowdown as Andrew Parker knows them to you, so that you can give to the group. I kind of like us to just sort of have a working background uh, when we hit Elysium. Okay. Info dump. Rather, rather than, you know, rather than just, you know, playing out, uh, dragging an info dump out of this poor bastard. Yeah, yeah, no. Because uh, that seems so like it's likely to eat up a lot of time. It, it can. Uh, there, there's quite a lot of vampires in uh, in the city. Um. So the ones that I will give you just a real quick uh, lowdown on are the important ones. Um, the Baron of Avalon, uh, as they're known, is the Queen Anne, is Queen Anne, who is uh, the ruler of London. Uh, Andrew Parker describes them as a very powerful blue blood. Uh, the Prince of London is Mithras, and no one has met Mithras. The uh, the second in command to Queen Anne is uh, Violet Grant, uh, who is a fairly uh, fairly competent warrior cast. Um, there is also. Uh, his his leader Bryn Adams, who is uh, the uh, the artist Primogen, uh, basically the the leader of their clan, and then there is also the uh, the Under Prince, who no one really knows the name of, but they are uh, out of character. They're in essence the Nosferatu Primogen, uh, and then there is also. Uh, Xavier Simpson, who is the uh, local head of the Tremere. There are, of course, many other vampires, but these are the important ones as per Mr. Parker. I see he doesn't care about the oracles. He does not. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. The silence of me taking notes. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. Boss wizard vampire. <laughs> So, um, I'm going to take an assumption that uh, after drinks with Andrew Parker, you go, you kind of let him go about his business to not get uh, destroyed in the sun, um, and we'll meet back up with your crew uh, a couple of hours before Elysium, so that they can kind of get to know like everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got lots of bribes and uh, payoffs and. Uh, shutting people up to do. He's going to be a busy lad tonight. Oh, isn't he? He he's going to just miss all of his uh, all all of his uh, all of his fun. <laughs> now, I, I should also note that I'm going to uh, just sort of drop off this entire little notepad full of vampire notes with the others without particularly I mean, explaining if you really want to do us like a how and why this means yeah <laughs> yeah i was just going to kind of if walk in and as, solid, as their you big could have conversation, andrew like, oh, talk into way. a phone all that info and then we'll have it <laughs> no any phone does it if it's possessed I by ghosts and i possess ghosts phone. with phones all the time <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, that's that's going to be something like to set up for yes. her because she's not letting you touch her. Family. Smart rats. Rat so fun. Smart penis. rats come from every corner. <laughs> so, like, there's a good reason for it. Some are more smart than the others. <laughs> All rats are smart. Also, it's fucking true because I checked, and it oh, turns boy. out there's a Fomori power. <laughs> For strength, dex, and stamina called Mega Attribute that raises them by three. But in Book of the Worm, they released the Gorehound Take 2. And the Gorehound Take 2 mm-hmm. has an attribute for Fomora that shows Whoa. up only in Gorehound Take 2 called Mega Intelligence, giving it a higher intelligence. Therefore, I theorize that with the hundred or so rats I've made, at least some of them have Mega Intelligence because I used a really smart phone for them. And they might have like in four or something. Yeah, <laughs> some of those rats are smarter uh, than me. Smarter than some of the PCs. That 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 special yeah. sinking feeling you have when you when you hear somebody <laughs> quoting something you wrote as a prelude to destroying the game. <laughs> I didn't. It's, it's an official White Wolf book. Uh, Warhound Take Two has a mega intelligence oh stat. Boy. written right in their Fomori powers. I'm pretty, well, sure that that. I'm pretty sure the guy who wrote that just gave me access to in four rats. So who's <laughs> laughing now, Holden? <laughs> uh, I think you are. Uh, and Holden, I can literally hear both of you laughing. Uh, so oh, you so have swell rats and smart rats and Ooh, rats that can eat up people. Revenue with rats. Uh. Uh. Oh Christ! So anyway, I so time passes. Worry. You all have enjoyed your time alone uh, or recovering, doing your things. I'm also super hungover, except for and that's end of sadness. Fair. Who had really horrible nightmares? As always, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's why you had horrible nightmares. No, 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 no. no. Uh, so what? guys, what we should we, have, we bring into the list? We already the have a gift for the prince. prince. Two snake vampires. Slash staked and ready to go. Oh. We we have I guess that's fair. We have snake vampires. Case of four loco. We have various oh, party favors. Not, sorry. We have us not <laughs> killing them just for being terrible, which is a pretty big gift, by the way. And we have the fact that I might grant them wishes, which is a, like a fifth gift. So we're fucking loaded up. Unless you want to get them like, I don't know, a fucking what are, what are, Pandora charm bracelet for their Pandora bracelets? Should we get like a heart one or a bat one for them? It's the season. Pandora bracelets are things are a thing moms like. Okay, guys, if you don't know about them, your moms don't like them. Ah. I I know about them, and my mom likes them, and I yeah, have gotten all right. So let's one so we'll fuck we'll see freaking Christmas and birthday. Yeah, we'll we'll stock up on some of those for the vampires. Basically, <laughs> let's with tchotchkes. This does not cut, cut to the core. Stock up on some bracelets for for the important vampires, as Layla Church gives oh. you all a, a small notepad of important vampires. Oh my god, I'm I'm just googled and like the thought of just giving one. Of right, those to Queen they're Anne. so it's great. Like we'll we'll get one with a ladybug on it. <laughs> well, these things. Hey, okay, Maybe fuck off. These things are expensive. Of a machine too, to right. get as a uh, gift. Really impress her. <laughs> They are. They are. <laughs> and if you put these pills in water, they turn into dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> the underprince is like, give me those. I want that hat. Give me the pills. I would like an <laughs> army of dinosaurs. 
So yeah, we'll bring a bunch of bullshit for the stupid fucking vampires. Which is the kindest way to say it. Uh, should we be on our games tonight? Are we expecting a fight, gang? End of Sadness is hungover, and they're like asking this. Are we expecting a fight? How bloody is this going to get? Oh, I didn't mean to. And why are you heading into it smashed? It was an accident. <laughs> we accidentally we went on a pub crawl and got really hammered. I feel like the whispers kind of like comes, uh, co- whispers of the void kind of co- comes out from like around a corner and just goes, they tried to keep up with a party wizard. No, he was a wizard, uh, and his magic was party based. Don't try to think your way around it. You have to go right through uh, it. This know, is the world I... we live in. Okay. <laughs> Instead of having that conversation, let's have this one. And she pulls out a notebook and flops it down the table. So this ought to have us a bit less likely to have to fight our way out of a bunch of vampires. Oh, nice. I did some scouting. Here. Like, just pushes the paper across toward End of Sadness, hoping yeah, that and the will they pick it still up. actually recognize... End of Sadness, well, no, they're not going to pick it up. They put their fingers to the side of their temple and will levitate it gingerly into a scanner. Ah. Such low bandwidth. Fuck! I hope the vampires are still. I just, I just, I just not getting up a lot. Jesus. <laughs> hey, uh, end of sadness. Yeah, you've, you've got a pretty uh, good good finger on the pulse of the internet, right? Oh God. Okay. Um, if you could stop me asking me to roll a... perception. Perception, computer roll. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's. Uh, I'm gonna say fine. computer and sure. hits roll. Is this for like anything big? Difficulty six. This this is for something that's kind of coming through the something that's trending on the local. Uh, Local social Ooh, four media successes. that uh, the Despair 7 network has kind of picked up on. Four successes. Excellent. So you notice uh, through the local Despair 7 network and uh, picking up on certain hashtags and Twitter tags and what have you, that uh, there has been a sudden interesting increase in... Uh, Tags for demons and radiation, goth but things. also for goth things. Uh, to the point that uh, it we yes, very goth things. To the point that there is um, at least two Tumblr stories going around uh, that specifically name someone named Miss Church who is dating a super heavy goth guy named Darius Alucard and another one that is having Miss Church date a, date a goth man who is definitely not a werewolf named fuck? Sebastian Wolf. Uh, I'll start bringing up the... Because the, this is Tumblr. What do you call it? The hashtags about radiation and demons, like, on screens. <laughs> like, I'll just gesture at the screens, and then I'll send to Layla's... Wait, am I back? Am oh, I no. back? Oh, oh no. no, he cut out. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, we lost him. Andrew got okay. him. Okay, stop it. And we're back. Okay. So, uh, got cut off because of internet earlier. But, end of sadness, we'll throw up those statistics on radiation demon searches up on screens. And then on the 
fucking tablet that's in front of Leia because uh, Layla because there's always tech around End of Sadness like they're always bringing shit around that's been demon possessed. Your demon possessed tablet will start bringing up those Tumblr stories with key phrases highlighted with a line uh, at the bottom that says, "Do you want me to deal with this?" and the word "deal" is in red and pulsing. Uh, I will note uh, as the oh also. I, I should point out uh, all that information we scanned from Layla, the notebook about vampire bullshit. We will scan all that in. We will like, you know, put it into real like like computer text, and we'll try to grab faces and identities and like match stories up. Like the Despair Seven Network's doing the back end shit on this info while bringing the info that Layla has forward and putting it up on screens for people as well. I like how you're so this is all happening. It's it's secretarial work. It's great. I like how you're referencing anything that's on the book as not real information. <laughs> They like lights yeah. down the tablet and, uh, and utters an audible, oh, Jesus Christ. So I will note that there is, uh, as this is uh, something that was posted on Tumblr, there is some very bad fan art of Layla uh, shining bright. Uh, they've basically given you a Super Saiyan aura uh, because that's as much as their uh, anime rattle brains will uh, fill out. Well, I'm going to save that one for I'm going to save that one for a future album cover. Actually, okay, okay. But then you know, then he's clearly no good. No. Actually, shit, no, unethical to source artwork without attribution. Mm. And leave that one. So the the real question here, though, is uh, the Despair Seven Network wants to know if you want to deal with that. I'll look to Layla. So, when you say deal, does that mean, like, you know, uh, ordering a U.S. drone strike on some poor bastard's flat, or, you know? I don't do that anymore, Layla. I'm a free person now. But no, it doesn't mean I'm going to drone strike them or something, like it was a wedding. I'll, uh, I don't know, probably just scrub it from the net, or have a bunch of fake accounts show up saying that they, too, also had that dream, and just gaslight them. I'll gaslight everyone on the internet. Okay, we're going to need to have a conversation at some point about the the word uh, anymore that showed up there. Oh, but um, you cut out. Oh right, she pulls a phone out of her pocket, not notably not her phone, and slides it on the table. Uh, I need you to make this magic. I wonder if it'll pop you back. Have in. Uh, Layla has slid over uh, River Cook's uh, personal cell phone. Uh, okay, cut them again. Uh, are lost. we losing them? And we're back. We got some technical difficulties, and we're back a week later, but we're back. Hooray. Uh, so, I know, right? So as we Christ. ended off with uh, Layla handing, uh, handing End of Sadness uh, the cell phone of River Cook. Okay. Uh, and the sentence will take the phone and I'll, I'll take care of this. Do you need it back right now, Layla? Uh, just before we, uh, we gotta meet the vampires. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it back to you in a couple hours. I just need to make sure it sticks. Also to answer your question about what I'm going to do to the people in the message I sent you, uh, just going forward, something outer limitsy if they deserve it. I'm not really here to saw people, but like if I run across these accounts doing this shit and I do a little digging and one of them like, I don't know, post pictures of sharking women, like from the VHS movies, I'm going to twilight zone them. Does that make sense to you? I, I, no, okay. So I, I don't actually was born this century. So I don't know what sharking women is. Also, I've forgotten. Oh, it's awful. Don't look it up. Move on. Also, I've forgotten everything about the conversation we had a week ago. (laughs) Uh, You had gotten just to recap real quick, just to recap real quick, because I do remember um, you had a bunch of blog posts being written about you because people noticed you were using your powers. And some of it was like cringy Tumblr fan fiction stuff or just Mm -hmm. internet stuff. Mm -hmm. And I had discreetly offered Layla the option for me to, take care of it for her and get rid of them from the net for the parts that Layla wants gotten rid of. And Layla had asked, 
are you going to do something fucking crazy to them, basically? And you know, sadness, I'm just having them be like, no. You could trust them to not be fucking crazy. Oh, God, I just remembered what sharking is. Jesus, fuck. God damn it, people. I told you not to do it. <laughs> wow. The internet exists, I'm afraid. Wow. I told you not to do it. That, it's in the opening of VHS, and the first two VHS movies are actually really interesting as far as anthology, found footage horror movies go, but that's part of the framing device to get you into the anthology format, and it's just upsetting and completely like sours the taste on rewatch. I've heard that the new one is it just, pretty it good. Just, oh. Three is a shit show. Don't watch it. I've heard, Don't I, even I've heard negotiate the VHS with tries to get you to watch it. Was pretty good. Yeah, I hear that might be interesting, but I got no net up here, so I'll be some time before I can check it. Anyway, anyway, I would not it all, use all my bandwidth of the month gambling on VHS, like whatever the fuck you were up to. <laughs> I, I love found footage movies. I love Grave Encounters. Every listener here should watch both Grave Encounters. They're so well done. It's shocking. Anyway, Layla, nothing cruel or unusual. Well, I think I can trust you as far as nothing cruel, but yeah. All right. Yeah, go for it. Hands up like fair. <laughs> all right. So yeah, that stuff will be scrubbed. All and the fan if, fiction you know, is going to get my scrubbed. my investigation... <laughs> Yeah, scrubbed, distorted, scrambled. It's going to be unrecognizable to Layla in a way that will be able to be traced back to her, like, brand-wise. And, like, if I find out these people are, like, not even do music or something, they're going to get it. They're going to get it, okay? Okay, you know what? That's fair. They get, they're going to get gone. But if not, I don't care. I know what Despair 7 is capable of with uh, gaslighting these people and uh, fixing up their Tumblr posts. Um, not even going to have yeah. you roll anything for that. Report mob. So long as you're not trying to be actually uh, malicious against them in a way that would like get them out of the country or whatever, or like actually physically. Yeah, hurt, I'm not. I'm not. You're good. I'm not trying to creepy pasta them. Like I'm not trying to turn this into a spooky story where photorealistic eyes will show up on their monitor or some fucking shit like i'm ready for the oh scp my god. You're gonna, no, you're they're just gonna, gonna get they're just gonna get dealt oh my god you can physically bend drown someone <laughs> yeah i know it's great oh, that's hard I, like i i do do that what? but not in a scary way oh ben drowned is a story of a it's the original haunted video game cartridge you can haunt video game cartridges with the mind power trick end of sadness has not like game boys because they're not complex enough but anything that's complex enough to be a smartphone, you can do like a hacked haunted ROM <laughs> shtick to them. Right. Which I do. I definitely do. Oh, absolutely. I can totally believe that uh, y- you've just been making all of those uh, come true. Uh, Sonic.exe is your, is your new handle. <laughs> oh, no. N- <laughs> none of the garbage ones. The garbage ones are all awful, and Sonic.exe is one of the garbo ones. <laughs> okay, okay. Sonic.exe like- is off the table. So we have the option Undertale of like is probably the best haunted cursing our enemies copy of Raid Shadow Legends is what I'm hearing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, like yeah, more absolutely. thoroughly than just the base install. Right. But yeah, End of Sadness will... Uh, the reason I took the phone and didn't just spend Essence right away is I'm going to go to the Gamma Cave and just keep re-rolling on my Excellency until I get permanent and then I'll give it back to you. I just don't want to do that here. Okay. Right. Um, so you're basically going to be hacking the phone to get any kind of information. I know that um, the... Well, I make it alive. And once it's alive, it just tells me everything we want to know. Oh, okay. It just spills its guts. Oh, what yeah. I just the... I just want to... Shit, I'm not even averse to giving it back once it's like our bitch, you know? It basically gives yeah, us a... Yeah, I'm going to haunt it up. Camp. It's going to... Yeah. You- I'm like, you know what, Layla? I should probably give you this at this point. I should probably give this to all of you guys, but Layla's a little more... Uh, Layla travels a little bit more from the core group. Uh, and says we'll give you like a bag, like a burlap sack of like phones and Bluetooth headsets and earpieces. Just like a bunch of miscellaneous corporate tech. All that's haunted if you want to like leave it places and give it to Marks. <laughs> Thank wow. Thank you for the bag of haunted nokias <laughs> wow okay well, you know, know, right. you a what if you want now <laughs> you become a cursed shopkeeper come on layla it, 
if you do like a, a your own solo mission, like not with the crew, and it's just just themselves and the rest of the exalts, like you're gonna want to leave like GPS tracers, you know, cameras. Phones are basically everything a spy needs, and it's a lie, right? So, and I've also yeah. got this sweet. They're bugs. I, we've also got this sweet Nokia 3310 that you that gives you a perfect defense once. How did I ever get along <laughs> without these? And what exactly kind of like curse? Is, did you put on the in gauge? I found her at the bottom. Oh, it's just an in gauge. <laughs> it's yeah, the I most first thing. I bought I one. I have this razor. <laughs> oh, oh wow. Okay, the fact that I laugh that hard that hard at that joke just tells my age. The fact that I told the joke. I remember the end gauge. It was a whole thing. <sighs> so, at some point, um, I guess. You, you have finished hacking the phone because um, it's going to just happen. If you if you're doing it at the uh, yeah, at the Gamma Cave, like you basically get infinite cave. rerolls. Um, yeah, I will melt this. thing. <laughs> you will melt this thing before that. It doesn't give up its information. Um, basically, with that and having Andrew Parker uh, on retainer at this point uh, for the next year. Um, what information do you all want about the local vampire scene? Because, <laughs> like, it, I mean, I just, I just spent a bit of time partying with mages, so they don't really have anything to give me anymore. The mages, uh, not about what that you're currently looking for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably, you know, get the basic information about the, you know, political structure of the vampires, you know, who we're dealing with, what the clowns are, and so on. You know, the basic stuff you can pick up from any black dog publication of, you know, Revenant the Ravishing. <laughs> you get all the basic information about vampires that you would if you had spent the uh, the, the $50 American to pick up your copy of uh, Vampire the Masquerade at your local Barnes Noble. Um, uh, Andrew Parker plus... Wow, this the, is like a lot more like... Pro, this is a lot more like appealing to Nazis than I expected it to be. <laughs> right? It's so weird. Oh no, <laughs> this is some really bad artwork for for this German Zemisi. This is the worst. Don't ever look it up. <laughs> what's up with this fucking glove oh, what an inter- <laughs> oh, man, what an interesting series of pe- piercings this ZMC has on the back of this book uh, right so um, with Andrew Parker and the uh, and, and the phone and the now uh, alive phone of uh, River Cook um, you all have enough information uh, about basically the local vampire uh, leaders, as well as like clans in the most basic air quotes. Um, The Toreador, obviously uh, who Andrew Parker is a member of uh, know what that they're called, but the rest of them tend to, uh, sometimes they don't always give all the information to the lower level people. So like the Nosferatu are like, that's a name that like everybody calls them because haha, like Nosferatus are ugly. All of them kind of do that. But like Andrew Parker only knows like, uh, like the blue bloods, the wizards, um, the, uh, the muscle, the beasts, the crazy ones. Like he doesn't have exact names for them. I'm assuming he doesn't know basically Jack Diddley Dick about the Sabbat. Um, the altar. <laughs> he knows them as the enemies and that's about it. Um, Andrew Parker is notably, um, fairly low on the totem pole as far as Camarilla goes. um, but is for his particular scene uh, fairly competent mm. is the best way that I could put uh, where that he stands and everything. Um, but he does give you guys names um, specifically of the primogen, um, which I think that I gave you most of their names last game. 
or last uh, last time that we were able to record. Yeah. Uh, scroll up an entire week. <laughs> right. I did take notes. And I have forgotten all of the notes I took. Yeah, let me paste it back in. There we go. Oh, there we go. Uh, so for the sake of things that I have added into here, um, the, uh, there, uh, again, the under Prince is the Nosferatu primogen. Uh, Xavier Simpson is the Tremere head of the Chantry. Um, the, tr- to be specific, um, Andrew Parker, when that he talks about the Tremere, um, there's a slight he does not respect them um in the sense that like they are a part of the camarilla in the biggest of air quotes because the prince does not respect the tremere so a tremere primogen in theory doesn't exist in london but it they are there um there is also as far as other people of note, there is uh, Sylvia Vale, who is the Malkavian primogen, and Quint, who is the sheriff. Um, do, 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 do. I'm just double checking that I'm not missing anyone big on my notes. Um, And then as far as um, the people who the people who are um, other important people is there is someone named Bigger Anner who is the leader of a local faction uh, called the Anarchs uh, or the Anarchists. Uh, and to give you its veil as in V E I L. I got it first time. Okay. Ah, the Melkavian's doing the Melkavian thing. Bigger Luke, anarchist leader. Gotcha. Uh, And that's about as many people as that Andrew Parker thinks are important. Well, first of all, I'm not using any of these special terms, so don't expect me to remember them. Are you I assume that you're saying that to Andrew. (laughs) I'm just saying that to the group. Like I'm saying it aloud. Like I, I'm not talking to Andrew, just like I'm not talking to the news on the television. You know, <laughs> I'm just speaking aloud my thoughts. Um, Andrew um, will look to you with the utmost concern in his eyes, um, considering that he is the servant of Layla, and you are clearly one of Layla's friends. Uh, sir... Yeah, we're buds. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, if you don't refer to them by their proper title, uh, if you don't refer to any of them by their proper title, I would at least suggest that the one that you do refer to is uh, the the Baron, uh, Queen Anne. The Baron a- Anne. Just- very well. Ver- very well, Andrew Parker. You get your one favor from me this year. I... Appreciate that. Also, if you were to meet Mithras, I would certainly suggest you refer to them as Prince Mithras. But no one's met Mithras, so it's unlikely to happen. And you, I think it's very strange that you vampires have a cat girl as your prince, but okay. So is is the bigger Anne related to the Queen Anne, or is that just kind of a diss? Oh, no, 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 no. She, Anner. Right. So she's like... I'm going to be more Anne than Queen Anne, so I'm Anner. Well, no, no, no it's a name. Harder, faster, Anner. Yes. Okay. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, I see what you did there. You know, Layla, if we could get you a keyboard, maybe we could turn you into uh, the next big uh, church punk. Hmm. I could use some of my connections. How do you feel about techno? Church punk? Wasn't that just Martin Luther? The silence is in character. (laughs) (laughs) Limit. (sighs) Hey, Layla, where'd you get this, like, vampire servant from? Oh. Around. Oh, okay. No, that's fair. That's how I got my last vampire servant. I just picked it up off the street. Fair enough. No further questions. Yes, well, you see, uh, sir, my uh, my friend Layla here found me at Carfax Abbey. And then she showed me the way. So I'm here to help. Like any proper Sorry, Toreador, okay? uh, Andrew Parker still wants to be the center of it. The- <laughs> the way what did she like what like jesus oh no not like that philistine <laughs> layla showed me exactly how convincing that she can be to the heart and soul of artistry he kind of oh, standing behind up. him like, okay when when, when uh Sadness mentions Jesus. She like points a finger up, shakes her head, and then rotates it to point down, and then nods. It was just an odd turn of phrase. I just, yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. Is the Andrew Parker's bigger friend called Brian Adams? Isn't that a person? Oh yeah, I did a duet with Barbara Streisand. Uh, it should actually be Brian. Yeah, Adams. yeah, that's a music person. I apologize. It should actually be Bryn Adams. I might have mispronounced it last time. Ah, oh, well, that's, that's I much mean, less exciting. Now that it's there, it's never going to go away. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. You can just call her Brian. She won't be offended. Right? <laughs> oh. Okay, well, um, do we have any more info we need to pump out of this vampire? Is there any more info we need? I think we've got everything. I honestly don't know. I'm assuming, like, if... Would it be safe to assume that basically if we get there and we need to know something that we didn't foresee in this conversation, we can... If there's something that comes up... If there's something that... Let's stop doing the Shadowrun thing. Yeah. I was going (laughs) to say... We'll do the Blades in the Dark thing. If there's something that comes up that you guys would have definitely asked about that you guys forgot to ask about, we can just be like, oh yeah, and then we flash back and uh, here's Andrew Parker telling you guys about this thing. Yeah. How many weeks have we been planning to go to Elysium? (laughs) It's been like a month. It's been so long. Right? Yeah. Anyway, do you want me to like... I'll say this when the vampire's not around. Do you want me to do anything to that vampire for you? Like, put, like, a GPS in them or something if they get kidnapped? Uh, well, you know, um, eventually. Uh, how literally yeah, okay. are you talking about you sent a man to hell? Oh, like, like 100% literally. Like, I, I, I okay, to, to be fair, Layla, I kind of botched that one. Like, I, I really overplayed my hand on that one. It looked kind of like a jackass. I promise you, though, if you need me to do that to someone that you know, I'll not cock up the drama for it, okay? Uh, Let's put a pin in that for now. But, uh... Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. I'm I'm working out deets, too. It's, It's fairly convoluted. Like, okay, I'll just tell you. I'll just get rid of the mystique. If someone gets a wish from me, they owe me a favor, and if they choose to tell me to go fuck myself for that favor, they go straight to hell. Ah, uh, see, that's that's uh, that's not much utility. Convoluted. Mm. Yeah, like it's easy to do in a fight. Like you just threaten someone to do it, or else you'll kill them, and then they'll do it, and then you do the thing, and then the thing happens. It, it, it doesn't flow very well. I know. I'm working on it. Despair Seven says that there's an alternate fix that I can look into if I really concentrate. I just haven't gotten there yet because honestly, Layla. We've done a lot of stuff the last little while we've been together, but I haven't really found anyone I've like 
hate it enough to make that an active thing I do all the time, sending people straight to hell. It just, it just hasn't come up in London yet. I'm fairly new here. I've killed all the people I've wanted to kill in London. It's so weird. It's almost like the British people are very good at like towing the line. <laughs> I have to. But it's just, it's just, I don't have any nemesis yet. You know, it's, I'm not saying that, that I don't, you know, these people aren't awful. I'm just saying I, I haven't found a nemesis to kind of get me to do that. You get what I'm saying, right, Layla? Yeah. It takes focus. I just don't have the focus to make it work consistently. But hey, we're going to a vampire party. Maybe that'll change. I'll keep a pin in it for you. Good. Okay. Um, so with preparations out of the way, uh, is there anything else we'd like to do before we wrap up this episode and then go over to uh, Elysium in the next episode? The next one. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, I, think, I think I'm good. Sure. Lose it? Good. Yeah, You're good? Okay. Yeah, pretty sure I'm good. I, end up, I, right. think, I, can, I think I can top up my, uh, my friggin' essence now, considering I spent several days around. Yeah. Yeah. Go for a spell that you've done, okay, and you're oh, gone. And Pete's doing a crafty thing that's going to take like a week or two, right? Yeah. yeah. Then we're topped up. Yeah. Easy peasy, lemon sneezy. Okay, also, yeah. I mean, I, if there's anything you guys want to do in between those, uh, including like spending XP, obviously, you know, get that done. Uh, before right. next week's session. <laughs> the hardest air <laughs> I need, I need more XP. I need like 12, 10, 15 more XP. Just give me more. <laughs> it's going to be quick. <laughs> it's going to be three this time, bud. <laughs> I know. I, uh, I'm just trying to, to fucking get myself to Essence 3 in one big leap. <laughs> Almost. You're, you're so close. Let's, I'm let's see what we can get through uh, tonight for, uh, for this game. So anyway, um, yeah. do you want to take us off? I was Devin. Oh, there. Brendan. Holden. And Sam. And this is sponsored by nobody. <laughs> Signing off. Nailed it. <laughs> this game is a collaboration between A Pair of Dice Lost and Sponsored by Nobody Podcasts. You can find us at a pair of dice lost.podbean.com and sponsored by nobody.podbean.com. You can find Exalted vs. World of Darkness over at holdenshearer.wordpress.com.